hi hope you're all doing fine in this video i'll be discussing indirect pulp capping various important points relevant to indirect pulp capping their indications contraindications objectives of indirect pulp capping clinical procedures and the criteria which we consider to be important for indirect pulp capping to be successful so first let's see what is indirect pulp capping so indirect pulp capping is a clinical procedure which is performed in a deep carious tooth where pulpal inflammation is deemed to be minimal so in teeth where there are deep carious lesions when carious excavation is obvious to pulpal exposure we avoid complete carious excavation and perform the so called indirect pulp capping for example consider this as a tooth we have the pulp chamber inside right if there is carious lesion which is marked as black and it is almost involving pulp radiographically an excavation of this carious process leads to pulpal exposure then in those cases we retain some amount of carious part which is close to pulp and try to place a biocompatible material that's important so we try to place a biocompatible material which can be either calcium hydroxide or zinc oxide used in all and then try to cover the entire restoration with a permanent restorative material like amalgam or a thick mix of jetvoy so the aim here is to seal the entire cavity and cut off this carious process from the external oral environment in order to prevent carious extension right so that is in brief about indirect pulp capping so what are all the indications where we can perform this procedure now let's see the indications so coming to the first indication in order to perform indirect pulp capping the pulpal inflammation has to be minimal so this can be determined based on various signs and symptoms right and the second criteria is as i have previously discussed in those carious lesions where entire excavation of caries would lead to obvious exposure of pulp in those cases we intentionally retain the carious part which is close to pulp and go ahead with indirect pulp capping so in deep carious lesions right so these are the indications of ipc where either the pulpal inflammation has to be minimal and in those cases where we have deep carious lesions where a complete excavation of caries would lead to obvious pulpal exposure right and then we should know the contraindications of indirect pulp capping as well so the first and foremost contraindication is presence of any pulpal or periapical pathologies so when there is pulpal or periapical pathology indirect pulp capping is completely contraindicated because the aim of your indirect pulp capping is to maintain the vitality of tooth once that vitality is compromised with some pulpal or periapical pathology then there is no point in going ahead with your indirect pulp capping and then it's contraindicated in those cases where we have soft leathery dentin which is covering greater surface area of tooth and the tooth is non restorable so in cases where we have soft leathery dentin covering greater surface area on a tooth and which is non restorable ipc is contraindicated again because the aim of your ipc is to maintain vitality and this is possible only when we can obtain a proper perfect seal so when that is compromised then this procedure is contraindicated and now let's see the objectives of indirect pulp capping 
as I have mentioned clearly, ultimately our aim is to preserve vitality. So to preserve the vitality of tooth, we perform indirect pulp capping and also to remove as much of carious dentin as possible thereby decreasing the load or number of bacteria or carious bacteria involved in infection. So the second objective would be to remove or reduce the count of bacteria involved in caries, right? And the third objective would be to remineralize the remaining affected dentin which is present. We have a concept of infected and affected dentin as I have discussed in my previous videos. So one of the objectives of IPC is to remineralize the affected dentin which is remineralizable, right? And then the other objective of IPC would be to prevent or to minimize the inflammation of pulp and to make sure that there is no worsening of the pulpal condition. So once IPC is done, vitality of tooth has to be maintained and there shouldn't be any symptoms like pain, swelling, resorptions or any other periapical changes. So maintaining the integrity of tooth is also very important. So that's another objective of IPC. And then most importantly, how do we consider the procedure to be successful based on the amount of reparative dentin that's being formed in response to biocompatible materials such as calcium hydroxide. So the moment you place a biocompatible material in this area and provide a proper seal to this entire area by placing a permanent restoration, there is something called as tertiary or reparative dentin. So we have a primary dentin which is formed till root completion or root apex closure and once the root apex closure occurs the dentin which is formed throughout our life is considered to be secondary dentin right and then we have something called as tertiary or reparative dentin which is formed in response to various noxious stimuli or even because of caries or because of any other harmful stimuli to your pulp so even in response to these medicaments or biocompatible materials like calcium hydroxide there can be differentiation of odontoblasts from the pulpal stem cells leading to formation of reparative dentin. The most important point here to be noted is the rate of formation of tertiary or reparative dentin is 1.5 microns per day. And there is this deposition of reparative dentin for up to 30 to 48 days after which the rate of deposition decreases. Right? This is very important. The amount of tertiary dentin that is being formed per day. And now coming to the clinical procedure. So as I have discussed, so this inner aspect is the pulp cavity. If there is any carious lesion which is almost involving the pulp, so initially the first thing to do is diagnosis obtain the status of the pulp and evaluate the symptoms of the patient and then once the case is a clear-cut indication for an indirect pulp capping then we go ahead with isolation so the first step is isolation under rubber dam anesthetize the tooth if necessary and then excavate all the caries using a spoon excavator or a slow speed round burr. A slow speed round burr. It can be either made of stainless steel which is considered to be ideal for caries excavation or a tungsten carbide burr. Usually tungsten carbide burrs work efficiently at higher speeds rather than at lower speeds. So caries excavation has to be done completely except for that part of caries which is close to pulp. That carious part which is close to pulp can be retained over there. And then we have this concept of affected and infected dentin. We should try to remove as much infected dentin as possible which is soft, leathery and dark in color. 
and it can be stained readily with caries disclosing dyes right and then after excavation of caries we'll try to place a biocompatible material such as a calcium hydroxide or a zinc oxide eugenol right on top of which we'll try to restore the entire tooth or the defective part with a permanent restoration such as amalgam so this is very much crucial and plays a role in enhancing the prognosis of a tooth because once there is proper seal of a cavity the prognosis would be much better because or else if there is contamination or communication between this carious process and the oral fluids there can be continuation of this carious process and decreasing the longevity of the tooth or can affect the pulp adversely so seal of restoration or cavity is considered to be very important especially in case of your indirect pulp capping which really enhances the longevity of your tooth as well as pulp right and then once a permanent restoration is done we recall the patient approximately after six to eight weeks in case of your indirect pulp capping so within this six to eight weeks if there is no worsening of pulpal symptoms no pain no inflammation no swelling then we ask the patient to come back after six to eight weeks evaluate the uh, case or tooth both clinically and radiographically see for any periapical changes symptoms of pulp signs etc and then we re-enter the cavity and remove any remaining dentin or any remaining caries which is present over there and then again seal the tooth with appropriate base and then amalgam so in this process of six to eight weeks duration of time there will be adequate reparative dentin formation only when there is adequate reparative dentin formation we consider it to be a favorable response of pulp and the case can be deemed successful provided there are no symptoms and then we can re-restore the tooth with amalgam however re-entry into the tooth or into the cavity is not necessary when the seal is found to be intact so in the first appointment when we have done a permanent restoration with amalgam when we ask the patient to come back again for second visit if the seal is found to be intact without any symptoms with proper radiographic features like uh, presence of a radio opaque reparative dentin beneath the carious lesion then there is no point in re-entry into the tooth and it can be left in that fashion so to consider indirect pulp capping a success the pulpal vitality has to be maintained without any worsening of symptoms or without any radiographic changes especially in periapical area and there should be a formation of a reparative dentin or tertiary dentin beneath the placement of biocompatible materials such as calcium hydroxide if these criteria are met then we can term indirect pulp capping as a success and in case of young permanent tooth since the vitality of tooth is being maintained there should be continued root formation and root apex closure after ipc right then we have a patented dentin thickness measuring device which is called as prepometer so this prepometer electronically measures the amount of dentin that's present over the pulp the amount of remaining dentin while we are preparing a cavity or tooth so this device has a light signal which can emit one of the three lights it can be either green orange or red so green indicates that there is adequate amount of remaining dentin thickness in the area where we are preparing a cavity or tooth orange indicates a minimal amount of remaining dentin and red indicates that we are too close to pulp and there can be pulp exposure so this prepometer helps out the clinician to find out the amount of remaining dentin which is present while excavating either a deep carious lesion or while preparing a tooth or a cavity right and to summarize the whole procedure so indirect pulp capping is a procedure which is done in cases where there is mild pulpal inflammation and also where there is deep carious lesion and the excavation of entire caries 
would rather lead to pulp exposure. So in those cases, we prefer indirect pulp capping, right? So these are the indications of indirect pulp capping where pulpal inflammation is minimal and in case of deep carious lesions, we advocate indirect pulp capping. And the contraindications are when there are any pulpal or periapical pathologies and when there is soft leathery dentin covering greater surface area of the tooth and which is non-restorable. So the marginal integrity or the seal of restoration is a very important factor in evaluating the prognosis of a tooth which is undergoing indirect pulp capping. And then the most important aspect here is the amount of reparative dentin formation which is formed in response to a biocompatible material such as calcium hydroxide is approximately 1.5 microns per day for the first 30 to 48 days and then the amount of tertiary dentin that is formed decreases and second appointment has to be given after six to eight weeks and we should evaluate the patient both clinically and also radiographically using the following parameters based on which we estimate the success of indirect pulp capping. So this is in brief about indirect pulp capping.